okay so first of all uh, good afternoon everyone uh, at the outset uh, i would like to thank uh, the organizers for inviting me to speak here today particularly professor rohini godbole and professor amit roy uh, i really miss being there physically but uh, it's uh, thanks to the organizers for arranging for this online talk uh, so my previous speakers Uh, they have already given an overview of the mega science vision exercise uh, uh, that started about one and a half years back uh, among the nuclear physics and high energy physics as well as accelerator physics community so in my talk i will be focusing on uh, the radioactive ion beams related activities the vision challenges and opportunities that we envisage uh, in coming Uh, a decade or a decade and a half or so. <clears throat> so this uh, uh, the mega science vision document, uh, uh, which outlined the core areas of research and development that the community would like to focus on, is shown here. So uh, for the nuclear physics, it is investigation of the structure of nuclear metal at matter at the extremes of isospin angular momentum, as well as other aspects of the, in the field to understand the various reaction mechanisms for production of super heavy elements and nuclei away from the line of state. So the major recommendations. which are part of this mega science vision document are uh, uh, to develop new accelerator facilities within india for radioactive ion beams high current stable beams and underground laboratories for the low energy nuclear physics programs also augment state of the art detector systems at the existing accelerator facilities which is essential to cope with the developments in the field and of course we shall Uh, continue strong participation in the experiments at fair and other international nuclear physics laboratories for radioactive ion beams as well as photon beams experiments using these facilities so uh, as uh, many of you or all of you might be aware that physics with radioactive ion beams is the new frontier in nuclear physics and allied sciences now Uh, the main motivation is study of exotic nuclei which is a, a nuclei away from beta stability line so here i have shown uh, the segre nuclear chart where the neutron number and uh, 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 is plotted on x axis and proton number on y axis for all the nuclei that are predicted to exist within the limits of particle stability as defined by the neutron trip line and the proton trip line so uh, about 300 stable nuclei exist shown as black dot on this nuclear chart around 3000 or so radioactive nuclei have already been uh, produced uh, using the heavy ion facilities as well as the first generation radioactive ion facilities shown here in yellow and the gray region shows the nuclei which are predicted to uh, exist but not not yet studied so this exot exotic nuclei which have been studied so far already uh, we know that show very unusual properties very different than the uh, that shown by nuclei close to the beta stability line and also several of this uh, uh, new uh, nuclei away from stability lines participate uh, in nuclear re uh, astrophysics reactions such as rapid proton Uh, capture as well as rapid neutron capture so there is a great interest for nuclear physics uh, physics related data for nuclear astrophysics uh, related questions so there is that's why a uh, need for systematic study of a large number of nuclei for the refinement of better predictability predictability of nuclear models and that is mainly the prime motivation of uh, radioactive ion beams the advantages is that large number of and as well as la uh, different large types of species of beams will be available and because radioactive ion beam itself is either neutron rich or proton rich uh, the exotic nuclei which are closer to the drip lines are expected to be produced 
with better signal to noise ratio uh, i have just listed three phenomenal discoveries that are driving the field of radioactive endings uh, the neutron halo where basically they discovered at by tani hatta et al at berkeley where uh, the extremely neutron rich nucleus of lithium element uh, it shows the size matter distribution in an unexpectedly large almost same as uh, that of lead nucleus also as one moves away from uh, uh, beta stability towards the drip line new magic numbers such as uh, 16 or 34 start appearing and uh, there is also weakening of shell structure and of course uh, the rib facilities remain a engine of discovery of uh, new elements uh, currently up to z is equal to 18 element has been discovered and also new isotopes for example at riken in one experiment 45 new uh, isotopes were disco discovered in the rib factory project Uh, RIB is also a very uh, potent tool for research in applied sciences because now one has an implantable radio tracer, so one can implant also in uh, 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 chemically incompatible lattice. Also, uh, industrial scale uh, radio isotope harvesting is being planned. In fact, the the medicines facility at CERN uh, from spent targets as well as beam dumps. and also a new area is emerging where uh, the possibility of using radioactive ion beams in particle therapy like carbon therapy future carbon therapy is being studied here the advantage is that if one can use the uh, um, low half life pet emitter such as carbon 10 or carbon 11 or oxygen 14 then it enables in situ dose mapping and improve treatment planning Uh, because of the in situ pet uh, scan available so this is a, an emerging area of r and d which is uh, so no wonder that almost all the uh, major accelerator laboratories in the world have built rib facilities are and also currently building the next generation much more powerful facilities so at this moment the operational most powerful facility is the riken rib factory Uh, having a cyclotron park, uh, having three cyclotrons and maximum energy of uh, up to three hundred fifty MeV per nucleon for uranium beam. And first, of course, our IB facility was built in Belgium. And fair, my previous speaker has already given a nice overview. Isolde at CERN is the largest isolde our IB facility. Spiral two is the next under our IB facility in France, Ariel in uh, Canada, and also Efri in uh, uh, USA. Can you see? So here, uh, this isol and uh, IF means in-flight separation. So basically, these are the two modes of producing our IB. So in isotope separator online method, basically the primary accelerator and our IB accelerator they operate simultaneously. that means the primary beam which could, which could be a light uh, low energy beam or high energy heavy ion beam is stopped in a thick target and radioactive atoms diffusing out of the target are transported to an ion source where they are ionized mass separated and then the rib of interest is accelerated to the desired energy so in this method one gets high beam purity quality but obviously because of the ion source and target related delays uh, it is element dependent and half life limit is typically greater than 1 second or so to get a reasonable intensity whereas in the infrared separator method one starts with a powerful high energy heavy ion beam which bombards the comparatively thinner target so here the projectile itself gets fragmented and the projectile fragments moving in forward direction retaining the velocity of the primary beam are separated in a powerful uh, in flight separator so one does not need a post acceleration or an ionization stage and one can get a very high energy beam at the output of the facilities so no half life limit 
but because isotones cannot be separated and generally uh, one has to have a reasonable uh, momentum acceptance for the separator to get the intensity so lower beam purity and quality is the problem of this facility but these facilities are the much uh, sought after facilities for producing and identifying new isotopes so coming to the plants uh, and the rib facility that has been already developed at pcc this shows the block diagram so we take the beam primary beam from the p130 cyclotron which bombards the target and using the gadget recoil transport method the act, uh, activity is transported to a ion source charge breeder then se mass separated and then followed by radio frequency quadrupole linac and other dtl heavy and linac modules this facility uh, has been built at our current campus and the purpose was to complete all the r&d steps for individual building block towards the next generation rib facility which is called anurit this stage is essential because the development of accelerators for radioactive ion beams the ion source etc is highly r&d intensive uh, intensive and one has to develop one one's own blueprints one cannot just go to the market and buy a rib so currently the facility till linac third module Uh, with an output energy of 450 kV per nucleon has been commissioned and the next stage has been installed and we are now uh, uh, working on the commissioning the high energy beam for anurib which is planned at our new campus at rajarhat the primary accelerator will be uh, 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 superconducting electron linac 50 mV and 100 uh, kV cw as well as uh, uh, creating uh, neutron rich nuclei through photofission and also proton accelerator for getting uh, neutron deficient radioactive ion this is because uh, the intensity of radioactive ion beams is uh, very dependent on the higher intensity of the primary beam so higher the intensity of the primary beam higher will be the intensity of the radioactive ion beam so that is the reason we are planning these accelerators for the anurib facility so um, at this moment calcutta vcc we have three operational cyclotrons the room temperature cyclotron operational since june 1977 is the machine which we are using for nuclear physics experiments as well as this is the primary accelerator for producing rib of course the superconducting cyclotron the beam commissioning was done in 2020 and now highest energy neon and oxygen beam are available from this facility so this is also going to be available to the nuclear physics users and other users and of course the medical cyclotron facility which is for societal applications and commercial radioisotope production so the rib facility this shows a photograph of our facility which is installed in one of the old ex experimental caves of the k130 cyclotron so this shows the radio frequency quadrupole linac the buncher and uh, lbt and two uh, first two linear accelerator modules the list of beams that are accelerated in our facility so far is li listed here so oxygen 14 having a half life of 71 seconds indium 111 2.8 days half life and typical intensity highest intensity that we get is about 10 to 5 particles per second and beam energy after rf q is 1.4 mev for the oxygen 14 beam along with radioactive ion beam the facility uh, remains a very good facility for stable isotope beams which are used by material science users so these are the energies of uh, stable isotope beams like carbon nitrogen and oxygen argon etc which are available from the uh, this shows some technology milestones the ecr ion source radio frequency quadrupole linac heavy ion linac all developed designed and developed indigenously and uh, fabricated in the country also uh, in, in international collaboration via international collaboration superconducting cavity development uh, we are doing so this is a photograph of indian institutions formula collaboration low beta 650 niobium cavity that has been fabricated at vcc eb welded at iusc and also tested at formula with 
very good high exhalation gradient was obtained. This shows a photograph of the injector gramodin for the superconducting electron linac and a QWR heavy and linac gramodin uh, with hermetically sealed cavities, uh, which is basically the technology development for anodiplasmin. And a photograph of our collaborators, Riken for physics design of accelerators, exotic nuclear physics, Samir Mumbai, who have developed all the RF transmitters for the RIB facility, CMRI Durgapur, who have uh, fabricated the radio frequency protocol and some other accelerator components, and Triumph Canada, with whom we are collaborating on the development of superconducting electron Linux and QWR uh, heavy and Linux RAM. This shows a photograph. And uh, now, when we uh, started thinking of the uh, launching the uh, work on Anuri facility, that time, an international advisory committee was constituted. These are the members of the uh, committee, uh, chaired by N Nigel Lockyer, uh, Professor Sapan Chattopadhyay, Yasushige Lianusan from Riken, Leah Marminga, Andrew Hutton from Jefferson Lab, Matt Gentrils, and also uh, Professor Amit Roy, Professor Kailash, and Dr. Alok Chakravarti, who was our team leader um, for radioactive ion room facilities and program, and also Professor A.K. Sina from university side. So this International Advisory Committee gave a very favorable report, and that uh, helped us in getting the confidence of going ahead with the Anuri project. Also, uh, the science opportunity workshops were conducted called SCRI, which is science with rare isotope beams. And this shows a photograph of one of such workshops. Uh, I can see Professor Tattopadhyay uh, here, Dr. Alok Chakravarti, Nigel, Dia, and uh, Kubo San from Riken, and my other colleagues. So, this shows a schematic of the Anurip facility. So, what we, as I said, so there will be two uh, primary accelerators a superconducting electron linac of energy 50 MeV 2 milliampers and a proton cyclotron of 50 MeV 200 microamperes bombarding two separate targets uh, where uh, respectively neutron rich and proton uh, rich RIB can be produced. And the scheme that I showed earlier of isolated uh, uh, RIB facility. And uh, experiments opening up at low energy uh, with RIB as well as stable isotope beams as well as in phase manner, one can start the experiment at medium and high energy. And eventually at about five MeV per nucleon or so, the beam can be injected in a ring cyclotron to get a high energy beam of about 100 uh, MeV per nucleon. So at this moment, the status, as I mentioned, is the low energy RAB facility is built. And now we have the blueprints of the facility up to the Linux module. Uh, Pre-project activity is ongoing. Site clearance from regulatory agency, building design R&D on gap areas like superconducting electron linac and high power act uh, actinide target development is on, ongoing. Anuri is planned to be constructed in phases. Approximate cost is about a thousand crores. Of course, I must add that these are pre-pandemic costs, so likely to go slightly higher now. And timeline is that we have funding till 2000, uh, March 2024 to complete the detailed uh, project report and the R&D that we, uh, is ongoing and submit the project report to the funding agency by March uh, end 2024. And for construction, our estimate is that it will need about 10, 30, uh, 10 years and about two years for beam commissioning and first experiment on the facility. So this shows a master plan of Rajarhat campus. So the Anurip site, the building uh, uh, size is approximately 100 meter by 200 meter. This is a greenfield campus, 25 acres uh, size. At this moment, some of the facilities like multipurpose engineering hall, guest house, AMD ARB building, as well as RMRC, which is a radiation medicine research center is already operational. And um, Anuri facility site, of course, as I said, the geotechnical investigation and other uh, things that are needed for regulatory clearance are in advanced stage. 
So this is now mostly the end. I'm towards the end of my presentation. Just uh, uh, to say a few words about uh, the other. Uh, Your time is up. Yeah. So this is already covered by um, Vandana uh, Nanal, but just I just wanted to say that presently, the nuclear physics community uses mainly three accelerators in India. That is the VECC uh, the, and the two pelotons and TF1 and IUAC. And uh, of course, uh, the facilities are, uh, have been listed in the mega science proposals. And nice. just, I, yeah, just one, two minutes. Just one um, another the point I wanted to add that BRC also is planning for a proton driver based RIB facility at the new uh, upcoming campus at Vizag, Vishakapatna. And uh, although it is planned for 1 GV, they plan to start as soon as the 50 MeV low energy proton beam is available. So this is already covered by my previous speaker, Subhashishta. So I'll just skip and just summarize um, that uh, low energy RIB facility and work on uh, next generation RIB facility is ongoing at PCC. The development is well aligned with the mega science vision 2035 recommendations put forth by the nuclear physics community in the country. So this is all I had to say. Thank you. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much. Yeah. The talk is now open for questions. Yes, please. Uh, I have two small questions. One is that you showed a timeline of about uh, I think 10 years, right? After the uh, T equal to zero, after you get the funding. Yes, now, yes, Professor Data. Yeah, yeah, at what stage is the 10 MeV per nucleon uh, uh, facility done? And that's one question, and maybe I can quickly ask the other one as well. That yeah. isn't it true that the space that you have provided for experimental halls and so on is limited? So is the plan that you will go down or up, uh, build another floor or something for other experimental facilities? No, so to let me so answer the second question first. The, uh, the building of 100 meter by 200 meters. So just so uh, the, the experimental halls and caves design has been made in consultation with the nuclear physics group at VACC. So we feel that in the same floor itself, the experimental facility and halls should be sufficient. So that is the first answer. And second answer is that for 10 MeV per nuclear, uh, at the current site, our, we will not be able to go to that higher energy because of space limitation. Uh, and uh, um, for the uh, entire facility, at least we have assumed that for building construction, we would need uh, about uh, four to five years. And, uh, considering the current limitations in our country. So construction of the components for the accelerator will going on in parallel. And as soon as the building and services are handed over to us, we will start installing the facility. That is the thing, because until and unless we can do some parallel processing in, in terms of implementation strategy, we will not be able to meet the 10 years uh, timeline. So Professor Datar, I hope I have answered your question. Yes, yes, that's what he says. Yeah. Thank you very much. Let's thank Dr. Naik once again.